If you're creating a custom flag or a custom sign with multiple colors, let me show you how the CNC can help you clean it up. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. And in this video, I wanna share with you the process that I took to create this custom Ford Mustang flag. It did require multiple colors, multiple different steps, multiple different carves, tool paths, basically a whole bunch of different steps to achieve this outcome. And I wanna share with you the process because it does take a little bit of planning ahead of time to be able to achieve something like this. And specifically, I wanna share with you how you can use the CNC to your benefit to help clean up some of the areas where you don't have to be so specific and clean and precise with your painting. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. In this example, my flag is 36 inches wide. So I decided to make the tiles 18 inches. Prior to securing your material to the wasteboard, you need to be able to make some alignment marks. One 18 inch mark needs to be on your wasteboard and another 18 inch mark needs to be on your material. So to do this, I measured 18 inches up from the edge of the wasteboard and made a mark there. I also measured 18 inches on my material and made a mark on that edge. I then lined up the two marks and secured my material to the wasteboard. Alright guys, jumping into Carve I Create. The first thing we want to do is get rid of the tile we're not starting with. Next, I remove the tile vector leaving behind the flag portion only. Now I'm starting with the stripes first. So to carve the stripes, I'm going to use an advanced V-carve toolpath. I'll be using the quarter inch end mill with a plunge rate of 80 and a feed rate of 90 and a max depth and the max depth is going to be 0.02 inches. And just note the plunge rate and the feed rate were always 80 and 90 respectively. This 0.02 inch max depth is not the final max depth for these stripes. We're gonna come back and do these stripes again to get rid of the stain and clean them up. You'll see what I'm talking about as we progress. If you saw my live stream when we set this flag up in Carve by Create, you'll remember that I said I would carve the outer circle vector completely rather than breaking it apart into two carves. So the easiest way to bring in the circle is to simply grab the entire logo and overlap it in the tile, then ungroup the circle and delete the logo that you brought over. And you're just left with the entire circle now. Also on that live stream, I said I was okay with not having an offset for this outer circle. Well, that's not going to work. I do need two circle vectors. So what I'm going to do is make an inside offset at 0.1 inches. And in order for the logo to look proportional, I'm going to get rid of the inner circle vector here and create an inside offset again at 0.1 inches. And now both my circles are proportional and it'll look better this way overall. The circle area is going to be black. So to get an idea of where I need to paint, just like the stripes, I need to do a shallow cut on this outside of the circle first. So I set my max carve depth to 0.02 rather than setting my max depth to stock bottom. Once the initial cuts are done, I can now stain my stripes red. I like to wipe away any excess with a rag and use my torch to help dry the stain. Don't worry about getting stained in the white stripes because we're going to clean that up next. Coming back into Carb I Create, we are now simply going to edit the stripes toolpath and change the max depth to 0.05. Nothing else changes. This will now clean up our white stripes and get rid of any stain that is in them. Once the stripes were done, I stained the circle black. Once that was dry, I carved both the circles and the text. So let's jump into Carb I Create for that setup. In Carb I Create, I selected all the circle vectors and the text and grouped these and set up a V carved toolpath for them with a max depth of stock bottom. Jumping back into Carb I Create, once the text and circles were completed, I ran an advanced V-carve toolpath for the inner stripes of the logo with a max depth of 0.05. In retrospect, I should have done the exact same process that I did on the larger stripes here because I ended up getting some bleeding into the white stripes 
and rather than painting over the bleeding, I could have simply cleaned it up with the CNC. And you'll see this in a moment. I also ran an advanced V-carved toolpath for the horse part of the logo with a max depth of 0.05. If you haven't noticed, all my max depths are the same. That's just my preference because I want to keep the flag looking proportional. So keep that in mind when making multiple pocket toolpaths. With the first tile finally completed, I taped off the inner stripes of the logo and tried painting the red stripe with some acrylic paint. That did not work, so I ended up buying red and blue spray paint to color them. And in order to reduce the overspray, you can see I really covered the logo to avoid any bleeding into the other areas of the logo. Once the first tile was completed and I had painted the inner stripes, of the logo, I removed the flag from the wasteboard and brought it down so that the 18 inch mark now aligned to the end of the wasteboard or the edge of the wasteboard and secured the flag there with brad nails. I repeated the exact same process for the stripes. I made an initial carve at 0.02 inches, stained the stripes red, and carved again at 0.05. After the stripes had been stained, I also stained the union blue. When carving the stars, I used a 60 degree V bit and a V carved toolpath with a max depth set to stock bottom. One thing to note, up until this point, once I had set up my X, Y, and Z zeros, I had not changed them except prior to carving the stars. Prior to carving the stars, I reset my Z axis in the union area to ensure that I accounted for any change in the material thickness or flatness. I also put some oral cow vinyl in the union because my customer wanted white stars. Once the stars were carved, I took the flag off the CNC and spray painted the stars white. I was going to do two coats, but the vinyl curled up on me, so I wasn't able to. At this point, I painted the inner stripes white by using painter's tape to protect other areas from getting painted white. But mistakes will happen, so just take it slow. And also the horse was painted white using acrylic paint as well. And any touch-ups in the horse were made using a black Sharpie. One thing I noticed, or didn't notice I guess, is that I didn't record myself painting the white stripes. But I used painter's tape to cover the entire stripes, and then used an X-Acto knife to cut out the white stripes area, and then used a foam brush to paint them. Once the stripes were stained, I let it dry and took a small torch and torched the white stripes and the union to give it a weathered look. I did not torch the logo. After everything was dry and cooled off, I applied two coats of water-based polyurethane on the flag, and it was done. Here's the final product guys, what do you guys think? All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys need that file, if you guys would like to make this one yourselves, the link for the file is down below. And if you guys need some help creating some custom logos that are very simple from simple text, simple images, go ahead and click on the screen right now where I show you the process that I take to be able to create some of those simple SVGs. I'll see you guys there.